I've given you a really rich uh, or thumbnail description of positive emotions. And what I want to turn now to is offering a prescription, not just a description of what positive emotions do to the mind and how they change us, but um, getting a little more specific. How much positivity, positivity do we need? How much positive emotions do we need in our lives? And how much is enough? I think we actually are closing in on some understanding of this question. And the prescription that comes out of my research with uh, Marcel Losada is that a ratio of positive emotions above three to one serves as a tipping point. And that tipping point um, will decide whether, uh, will help determine your odds of languishing or flourishing. Ratios of about two to one are associated with what probably most of us experience on a daily basis. And if people have depression or other emotional disorders, they're down near one to one or lower. Now, one of the things I appreciate about the idea of this positivity ratio, that we need at least three heartfelt positive emotions to open us up and lift us up for every heart-wrenching negative emotion that we need to endure, is that it, it's a three-to-one ratio is wide enough to encompass the full range of human emotions. The ratio is not three-to-zero. This is not about eliminating all negative emotions. I actually think a sailboat metaphor fits here really well. Rising from the sailboat is that enormous mass that allows the sail to catch the wind and gives the boat momentum. But below the waterline is the keel, which can weigh tons. You can take the mast going up as positivity and the keel down below as negativity. And if you sail, you know that even though it's the mast that holds the sail, you can't sail without the keel. The boat would just, uh, you know, just drift around or uh, fall over or worse yet, turtle. And um, the negativity, the keel, is, allow is what allows the boat to s stay on course and manageable. And at one time when I shared this metaphor with an audience, a gentleman said, you know, and when the keel matters most is when you're sailing upwind, when you're facing difficulty, expressing and experiencing negative emotions is really part of the process of flourishing. All of this idea of the ratio points out the prescription of where we should be, but how do we get there? Um, now, here's my advice. If you make your motto be positive, it actually backfires, okay? That leads to a toxic insincerity that's shown to be corrosive to our own bodies, to our own cardiovascular system. It's toxic interpersonally. I think we all know that person who's trying to pump sunshine a little too much Okay, so that actually is um, the biggest danger of positive psychology is that people come out of it with this zeal, this hyper zeal to be positive in a way that's not genuine and heartfelt. And that said, here's another quote that I really appreciate, that there wouldn't be such a thing as counterfeit gold, those yellow smiley faces, um, if there were no real gold somewhere. So how is it that we tap into those genuine, heartfelt positive emotions that do all this great work without slipping into the Pollyanna denial of uh, the yellow smiley face. One of the things that I think is very useful, knowing the, um, the reciprocal causality that runs between uh, the mindsets of positivity and, and positive emotions themselves, is to lightly create the mindset of positive emotions, and from that, positive emotions follow. In particular, uh, being open, being appreciative, being curious, being kind, and above all, being real, being sincere, um, these are strategies that from them spring positive emotions. Now, some of these are pretty self-explanatory. I just want to take a moment to uh, unwrap the, the motto, be open, as a way to increase your positive emotions. The reason that this works is that, you know, so often we can be preoccupied worrying about the future, ruminating about the past, that we're completely oblivious to the goodness that surrounds us in the present moment. 
um, because our worries and our concerns about past and future are so riveting. You know, bad, bad is stronger than good. It grabs our attention. That we completely miss the fact that almost every situation is in this exact moment benign. I like to think of it as right now, right in this moment. Is anybody putting pins in your eyes? <laughs> you know, is it? Um, you know, and actually, no. There's, you know, we're comfortable. We're, uh, we've had a good lunch. We've had some good conversation. And we often just are completely blind to these subtle, small sources of goodness. But when we're open, when we're really open to our current circumstances, those sources of goodness really are, are so much um, easier to draw from and draw the positive emotion yield from them. Uh, another thing that I think can be really useful is to step on the scale frequently, to track your positivity ratio just as a mindfulness tool. Um, and along with, uh, to, com to accompany my book, I created a free website that allows people to use tools just to, to make the task of figuring out what your positivity ratio for a given day is an easy one. It just takes two minutes. It's kind of surprising and humbling to realize that, you know, most of us aren't anywhere above this three to one on a daily basis, if we're honest with ourselves. But it, um, it's, a, it's a great tool. I, I suggest that, you know, Knowing one day's positivity ratio may not give you much information, but if you take this short measure at the end of every day for two weeks, you can probably get a sense of what your life is like right now. And then continue to use it as you uh, make changes in your life, as you um, introduce uh, more opportunities to be grateful, or you start a meditation practice, or start volunteering and, and um, uh, giving more frequently, and then track your positivity ratio and see if that changes. And so you can see how that's making a difference in your life. And so just as a, a nutritionist will ask people to keep track of their physical activity and their calorie intake as a way to become more mindful of meeting their health and fitness goals, this is a way of keeping track of your daily emotional diet so you can meet your well-being goals. And I just want to close with uh, my take on a famous Native American story that uh, one, one evening an old Cherokee told his grandson about a, about a battle that goes on inside People. He said, the battle is between two wolves. One is negativity. It is anger, sadness, stress, contempt, disgust, fear, embarrassment, guilt, shame, and hate. The other is positivity. It is joy, gratitude, serenity, interest, hope, pride, amusement, inspiration, awe, and above all, love. And the grandson thought about it for a minute and asked his grandfather, well, which wolf wins? And he replied, the one you feed. <laughs>